Wait a second. Let's do something different. Much better. Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So if you like that, uh, I'm calling that the uh, the chamfer chaser. And uh, common shop problem, uh, you know, you're milling, um, you're just going about your business in the shop, and there's lots of edges to break regularly. So you can walk over to the deburring wheel, you can use the file, or you can build something like this chamfer chaser. So uh, let's check it out and a little closer and uh, see what it's all about. So the, sh the short story on this is um, this is a, um, a project that I've kind of had on my mind for something like 20 years. Um, anyway, it's kind of based loosely on a, uh, a pneumatic one that I saw um, 20 years ago, something like that, and um, said, "Ooh, that's a good idea," but it. It had a real rinky-dink um, uh, depth adjustment, so uh, I improved that, or that was my idea for improving it. But um, let's uh, let's try it out on some uh, some blocks. You saw it on this uh, first edge of this aluminum block here. I got some steel and I got some plastic here. We're not going to do that one because it's out of plane. Um, but you'll get an idea of uh, of how it works. And uh, actually, let's do that. Let's uh, set it up like that. You know, you can, you can set it off on the side of the bench and just so you can go all the way through, right? Or you can just hold it in your, let's just do that, just hold it in our hand. Now it's set for kind of a minimal chamfer right now. Um, and, you know, I'd say that's 10,000, something like that maybe. Um, and, uh, you know, just to knock the edge off so that you can get it back in the vise and uh, not have any burrs that you're clamping on. So uh, let's, uh, let's try it again. And then I'll show you the adjustment mechanism and we'll do a deeper chamfer on something. And, uh, and then we'll get in nice and close and you guys can get a good look at this thing. <laughs> Gotta remember which edges you've done already, right? That's the hard part. Okay. So that one's kind of lumpy, so... Let's do a piece of steel. Okay. Okay. Okay, and you can see the little chips coming off there. Now it didn't cut much on this because this the edge of this is a little bit beat up, but it did cut it a little. So uh an adjustment mechanism. I'm going to bring you in closer and then we're going to do a bigger one on, uh, on this plastic. Alright, so I adjusted it for a pretty, uh, a pretty hefty chamfer, so let's try it here. Uh, that's a pretty good size one, right? Okay, actually, let's uh, Let's try the aluminum. No prob. Yeah. Steel. These are pretty small to hand hold, but let's go for it. No prob. Actually, I think this way would have been. I don't know. Hard to say which way. Actually, that gives a, a second cut gives a smoother finish in that direction. So anyway, you can see that it works. Okay. So let's get in close and see how it's built. All right. Let's take this thing apart, and you can see the guts of this thing. Now. <laughs> Uh, let's safe it out first. That's easy. Okay. It can't hurt me now. Um, I did not, I'm sorry, but I did not shoot any video of the construction of this. It's just one of these uh, uh, projects that I decided to uh, just kind of build and, uh, and go for it. Okay. 
there you can see the cutting tool. It's just a, a three flute uh, carbide end mill there, okay? And this is a cheap uh, drywall trimmer, a very cheap <laughs> drywall trimmer, uh, 18 volts. So um, so there's, there's the thing, right? You can kind of see it. Um, and let's break it down a little bit and you guys can see it a little bit better. Uh, and like I said, I did not shoot any video of the construction of it. Uh, I will share the design if people are interested in it. Um, I wanted to test the uh, the unit, uh, and that's you know, and I've tested it. And then I've got some, and you can see some sharpie marks on here, some little modifications that I want to make to uh, make it a little nicer. But uh, we'll do those on camera, and we'll put it back together, and then uh, we'll try it some more. So, okay, all right. So let's take the uh, the ends off first. So that's that's a central V block, and um, let's take that apart too, because it's two pieces, and it was just easier to make in two pieces, and I'll tell you why in a sec. Okay, um, what I want to do here, and one of the things that we'll do here is I want to cut some uh, some swarf channels in it, like that, in each side. Okay. I want to cut some little grooves in here that that kind of funnel the uh, funnel the chips down into the central groove down there, and um, um, and then they get blown out blown out the end. <laughs> Blow it out the end. Okay, so let's set that aside. Now then we get the the main thing here. It's got a uh, a trap nut assembly here. So let's uh, see if I can hold on to that. Oh yeah. Okay. But, it's a lock nut. It's got a little lock nut on it. Okay, right there. You can see the lock nut. Okay, it's just a nylock. And then here's a fiber washer. So what I can do is I can adjust the preload with that against that fiber washer, and I can take out all the slack, but then it still rotates smoothly without gouging the uh, gouging the aluminum. So that's the uh, the idea behind that. So let's uh, take that. Off. And I got the same thing on the other end here. And this is just a stock, uh, you know, uh, thumb knob um, that I got somewhere. You know, McMaster sells them. Okay, there's the nut. There's the nut. That was my only screw up is the nut. Because uh, what was supposed to happen with that is uh, uh, I was supposed to just be able to put a hex nut in that slot. Uh, but I cut this... I cut this uh, this slot a little bit deep um, for the clearance diameter that I put there, so the nut just rotated. So I had to make a new nut. That was my only my only bozo. So once again, you see the uh, the fiber washer there. Okay, all right, pretty simple piece. And what we're going to do is we're going to carve some of that away just to make it a little sleeker. Knock some chamfers on there. Okay, so we'll take care of that. So, and then uh, this is uh, what we call a parallel flexure here. And this is the, uh, what keeps everything nice and straight and provides some um, spring return and, uh, for, for the unit. And these are just made out of uh, blue steel here, blue tempered stock here. Let's, uh, uh, let's pop, pop these loose here. I should. see that you know here's the here's the major pieces of the thing right it's all pretty simple sim simple Simon stuff here and um, so I'm gonna knock some little chamfers on there um, and then uh, yeah, I want to knock a chamfer on the back side of that because it's a little sharp radius that stuff out a little bit and uh, then uh, detail these parts real nice actually we'll probably do a little engraving on uh, one of those and uh, cut some channels in that. So uh, let's get let's get to it. 
All right, we're going to use our, our little uh, angle pl or 45 plates here. These are actually really cool for, uh, for doing uh, chamfers here. Now, you can, you can attach them to the vise if you want. Uh, they have a, um, I've shown this before, they got a counterbore in them there uh, that actually goes into the, uh, the mounting screw for the job. But unless I got a lot to do, I rarely, I rarely do that. So I just make sure that the, uh, in fact, I probably don't even need this front one, but, okay. Oops, you know what? Don't do that, Mr. Wizard. Okay, I want it all the way down at the bottom. Oh, you know what? It doesn't, this one doesn't even matter because it's a single chamfer. So, uh, so I'm just going to come up and, uh, and touch off here. And, um, and then come down a, a particular amount. Okay, so it just, it just touched the crest there. Um, and I think what I was doing on all these other ones was a hundred thou, so uh, let's just do that. It's not a particularly fussy dimension or anything. See, you can't chamfer the parts for the uh, <laughs> the chamfer chaser uh, in the chamfer chaser, <laughs> unless you make two of them, I guess. So, uh, okay, so that takes care of one of the things, and then uh, we'll do this one here. Let's. Uh, so, yeah, this one's a little a little harder here. It's really got to sit like that, which is kind of suboptimal. I don't like that. All right, I got. I'll do. I'll do something different on that one. I really want to hold it kind of like that, right? So we'll get another little 45 in there. That looks pretty good. Same thing here. Just gonna come down until. See a little uh, a little touch off there. I'll come down. Uh, I'm gonna. You know what? I'm just gonna take it all in the way. I'll just go slow. and repeat here. kind of uh, so you don't uh, um, hit your you know when you're using the thing you don't hit your uh, your knuckles on anything or, you know stuff like that right soften some edges So now uh, we're going to figure out how to hold this to do that. All right, here's how we're going to do this. So I just want to come up to this vertical edge here and um, come on the center there, kind of. Get eyeball close. And then I'm just going to, when this grabs this paper, 
Let's see, let me turn that over so it's not the sticky side. I know that I'm pretty close to that edge. Pretty close, come on. There it goes, okay. And uh, so I'll just zero that, that axis. And then I'll just kind of whittle away at this. Make sure I'm not going to hit anything. So I can safely come up to that zero because I'm you know, 3 thousandths off of that or whatever. Careful, there's, uh, there's some business back there that I don't want to hit. a little bit. Let's go all the way now. So, you know, I established a Y dimension when I did this side. I had a little scribe mark on there, so I set the DRO, so I know when to stop when I come up here, if you're wondering uh, how I'm doing that. slowed it down all right all right so that uh, dulled that up a little bit and I'll do a little file deburring on this particular one and you see I got no edge there really to speak of so uh, that's kind of what I wanted all right ready to go on the second side you can see the uh, the other one down here I'm using it just as a, a filler block so the jaw stays straight so we're clamped we're all set we're kind of ready to go here uh, go ahead and uh, do some whacking here. Always like to make sure I got the V in the right place. detailing work added some uh, finishing touches you know a little bit of a uh, little bit of engraving here and there just to spiff things up folks have uh, mentioned that uh, I don't I don't put makers marks and stuff uh, very often so um, they're kind of right um, so I've been trying to do it more okay so here what we're gonna do we're gonna Go through that, into the nut, go through the nut. And I got my fiber washer there. And this is just a spacer just to get the knob a little further away from the uh, um, that bottom there, right? Okay, so all the way against the bottom. I don't need any pressure on it. 
fingernails. Okay, fiber washer, and then a nylock here. Run that down. So if I'm lucky, I'll be able to hold that. And then what I'm looking for here is kind of no the right amount of friction on this, right? And the lock that allows me to tune that, and it kind of stays put when you, uh, it's a little, a little too much. What I can do is just back that off just a skosh. All right, I kind of like it. Okay, there's, there's the sub-assembly. Okay, which way does it go here? Does it matter? I think we want those going that way, so. Okay, like that. Yeah, it looks a lot better with the, some of that stuff cut away there. Alright, so I think I want to put a little pressure on it this way. Now the flatheads will kind of find their own spot anyway, but give a little bit of help. Hey, there, and there you can see the that action there, right? So this is this is keeps everything nice and stiff and then that's the depth adjustment there so that's maximum and that's minimum there okay so let's uh, put Mr. Zimzammer in there so one of the reasons I chose this particular one was because it had this kind of nice uh, round nose on it and it has this kind of uh, spring in here this that's pretty cool too that uh, uh, I'm going to use I'm going to abuse my scale here to get it in there okay and then that runs that all the way down and then we square we square this with the world like that that's pretty good and then uh, this is the the clamp screw that keeps this from from moving and there's our end mill and now we got our swarf channels and we got our spiffy engraving on that end and that end and it actually kind of the way the size works out it kind of almost is vertical here right so this is a a nice attitude to use it in you know when you're uh, when you're running blocks through okay there she blows Put the magazine in. Chamfer Chaser 2021. Thanks for watching, guys.